when it comes to second line therapy, um, I think we have to, to attempt to define um, progression. Progression may not only be disease growth, it can also be intolerability of, of therapy. Uh, in some situations, it may be the financial toxicities that patients um, have to move to second line therapy. Um, the accessibility patients may have, um, you know, in the upcoming winter months, patients may not be accessible as, as easily as they may have been in the warm climates. Um, and therefore, their ability to receive second line therapy may be determined um, on patient values, not just clinical data. Um, it's very hard to always predict when you give first line therapy how long the therapy will be beneficial for. Um, Obviously, toxicities are difficult to predict, which is why we have to really consider uh, risk stratification, uh, which does actually lead to our, our thoughts about long-term survival. Um, to review patients who have no risk factors, favorable risk or good risk, have a median survival of 43 months. Patients with intermediate risk who have one to two risk factors have an overall survival, uh, median overall survival of 22 months, while patients with poor risk with three or more um, factors, their survival is under eight months. So when we think about how to take care of patients, um, first line, we always should be thinking about how we anticipate they'll be tolerating and receiving second line therapy. And again, the sequence of therapies to allow us to believe that we can actually um, approach our patients in a more um, optimistic uh, valued approach as compared to just believing that we have uh, one attempt to take care of their disease. Um, Factors when it comes to second line therapy, as we talked about, functional performance status, um, laboratory studies, um, financial toxicities, accessibility. Um, and I do like to utilize how the patients um, tolerated and benefited from the first line therapy. Um, you know, utilizing uh, first line tyrosine kinase inhibitor therapy, if patients do benefit from the VEGF inhibition. Um, and have a, a durable uh, response with good tolerability, one can consider incorporating that into a second line therapy. So if we, one receives uh, cabometics um, as a first line therapy um, and has a response rate and a progression-free survival of more than a year with good tolerability, one can consider utilizing a combination of a TKI and immunotherapy as second line therapy um, recognizing it still utilize the value of the VEGF inhibition, recognizing the patient active tolerability um, with a good progression-free survival um, benefit. Um, location of metastases, I think, is very important as well. I think if a patient has um, evolved to have disease in a um, rapid growth rate, um, in a decreasing functional performance status concern, whether it goes to a visceral organ, uh, or it becomes a painful metastasis, and one considers that you have to be a little bit more uh, aggressive um, utilizing a, um, one therapy, and some people do believe that a tyrosine kinase inhibition can offer a quicker response compared to immunotherapy. Um, one can definitely um, consider uh, incorporating a, a single agent or a combination uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor therapy um, again, based upon uh, what the patient received in first-line therapy. If the patient did receive a combination of immunotherapy as a first-line therapy, one can consider cabometics as the first TKI therapy based upon the Cabosun clinical trial, um, utilizing uh, cabometics as a first-line um, TKI, uh, which again opens the door for patients receiving second-line uh, TKI therapy, uh, that being uh, levatinib, which has been um, a very well studied as second line therapy, um, as well as being effective therapy um, as well.